Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. The passion for souvenirs transcends time and generations. I was reminded of this today when I received an email from Harold Peach, who watched my video titled, In 1837, George Washington's Remains Were Disinterred. Here's what was in the casket. For those of you who saw the video, you know the story. A letter that I found in the George Washington Presidential Library, which was an eyewitness account of the delivery of a new sarcophagus to Mount Vernon, to Washington's tomb in 1837, during the course of switching out the new sarcophagus for the damaged old sarcophagus, it was found that Washington's remains in the inner wooden casket that was sealed in lead had fallen apart and Washington's remains could be seen, his face, his chest. And there's a description of that account. I'll drop the link to that video in the comments below for those of you who haven't seen it will have the opportunity to watch it. Anyway, back to Harold Peach. Harold shared a story about a recent trip that he and his wife made to the Isle of Wight. There they visited Osborne House, which was part of Queen Victoria's estate. And there they saw a relic from George Washington's casket. To set it up, let me read you a passage from Harold's email. He says, Last May, my wife and I were touring Queen Victoria's retreat on the Isle of Wight. Being from America, someone told us to be sure and look for the remnant of George Washington's coffin that was on display in their museum. We asked about it, but the docent was not familiar with it. After he and we looked through numerous display cases, we finally located it, photo attached. Here's the photo. And you can see right here, it says on the plaque, piece of wood from the coffin of George Washington presented to His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, by Mr. Washington at Mount Vernon, October 3rd, 1860. So, Harold continues, I recall reading that the Mount Vernon estate gave out similar pieces to visiting dignitaries for years after the disinterment. Given this, there probably are other pieces scattered about in museums and private collections. There may even be a piece at Mount Vernon somewhere. Well, Harold sort of threw down the gauntlet, the research gauntlet, and I couldn't help myself. I did a bit of researching and found several mentions over the last century and a half and more than that of relics that include pieces of Washington's casket, that 1837 inner casket, the one that lay inside the sarcophagus. So let's take a look at these various accounts. The first one, the earliest one, comes from a newspaper called the Daily Evening Express in Lancaster, or Lancaster, Pennsylvania, July 10, 1876. This is a story about exhibits on display in Independence Hall to celebrate the nation's centennial. Here's the brief quote. Included in the list is, a revenue cutter made of wood from Washington's coffin. End quote. Now, a revenue cutter for you students of the Civil War and students of maritime history will know that's one of the ships that were part of the original uh, Coast Guard, if you will, that was operated under the auspices of the Treasury Department. Most revenue cutters were pretty sleek vessels. And here was probably a very small one that was engraved from Washington's casket wood. The next account is from 1911, the Evening Star in Washington, D.C., the May 14th issue, has a list of gifts and loans to the Mount Vernon Ladies Association. For those of you who watched the last video, that's the nonprofit 
philanthropic organization was established to care for Mount Vernon in the late 1850s. And in fact, it's still in existence today. The list of loans includes this anecdote. A cross made from wood of George Washington's coffin when his body was removed to a new tomb. A loan from Mrs. Simon Bolivar Buckner of Huntfordville, Kentucky. Now, Simon Bolivar Buckner, Mrs. Buckner, uh, the wife of Simon. Uh, Simon, well known to you, students of Confederate history and students of General Grant history, because Simon Bolivar Buckner was a Confederate general and a friend and West Point classmate of Ulysses S. Grant. Now let's jump to the early 20th century, the Chattanooga News in Chattanooga, Tennessee, January 23rd, 1923, has this list, a display of heirlooms by the Daughters of the American Revolution. Here's the, here's the item. Wood from Washington's Coffin. There is one bit of history connected with the Exposition Wednesday that should not be passed without special mention, and that is the bit of wood from Washington's coffin, this being in a walnut frame and bearing the following certified inscription. Quote, part of the mahogany covering of the leaden casket, which was removed when the remains were placed in the present marble sarcophagus in 1837. A piece of the coffin was presented by Colonel John Augustine Washington to Nathan Johnson, one of the slaves, Sarah Johnson, his wife, a servant at Mount Vernon in November 1887, divided the piece with me. I have no doubt of its authenticity. Signed, Harrison H. Dodge, January 19, 1887. I wish I had photographs of all of these, and trust me, I will be searching for them, and if I can find them, I will let you know. Here's one from the Sunday Record, Columbia, South Carolina, February 7th, 1932. This is a reference to Anne Pamela Cunningham, who was the founder of the Mount Vernon Ladies Association. This is a note about her will. It says, Miss Cunningham's will was discovered last week in the archives of the Lawrence County probate judge. Lawrence County is in South Carolina, and that's where Anne Pamela Cunningham and her family resided. Among the bequests were, quote, to the Mount Vernon Ladies Association, the four photographs presented to me by my late lamented friend, Edward Everett, after my first visit to Mount Vernon, because he regarded this visit as instrumental to the final sale of Mount Vernon to said association. Edward Everett, as many of you know, spoke at the dedication of the Soldiers Cemetery in Gettysburg around the same, right before Lincoln, or pardon me, right after Lincoln, or sometime around there. Anyway, I'll continue. Someone will let me know about that. Also, the gold pen with paper knife presented to me by Dr. H. L. Hodge of Philadelphia, with which the contract for Mount Vernon was signed, the lamp by which I wrote during the first and second years of my labors for Mount Vernon, the piece of wood taken from Washington's coffin given me by Mrs. Bird, a niece of Miss Ing Washington, the envelope containing a few of his hairs presented by Mrs. Lee and the piece of clock presented him by Charles of Spain given to me by Mrs. Lewis of Virginia. Now, I've got one more reference for you. This comes from the Center Daily Times in State College, Pennsylvania, April 8th, 1972, a mere 52 years ago. This is a story about collecting locks of hair. It says, the other, it's talking about a whole group of them. It says, another relic. The other is a bit grisly. Coffin-shaped, this is a description, quote, coffin-shaped wooden brooch 
about one inch long, mounted in gold, and inset with glass, under which is a lock of hair from the head of President Washington. The wood is from Washington's original coffin. Included also in the sale, and this is part of an auction listing, is the mason's trowel, which was used in 1837 in transferring the bodies of George and Martha Washington from their original burial places to the marble sarcophagus at Mount Vernon. So there you have it. Harold Peach threw down the research gauntlets about relics made of wood from George Washington's inner casket, the one that was part of the 1837 transfer from an old to a new sarcophagus. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.